So this is my lithium iron phosphate battery collection and something that I really want to know is how they compare to each other under standard test conditions. A lot of people criticized a couple of my videos because I was doing 1C rate. And if you have a high quality battery and it has matched cells and they're new, you will always pull the full capacity. But when you have a drop-in replacement with cylindrical or even prismatic cells, you do not get that much at 1C. And so what I want to do is test these against each other at the standard test rate of 0.2C at around like 70 to 80 degrees ambient temperature. And when we compare the results with the data sheets, we will see if my Hall Effect Capacity Monitor sensor works that well. A lot of people on YouTube and DIY guys and Powerwall guys love these and they are very accurate just based off of using them as a capacity monitor. You will have a 100 amp hour battery, you charge and discharge and cycle it, and it will say, oh, you have 100 amp hours available. So that's how I know that these are accurate. So I would imagine logically that these would be good as a watt hour counter. But today we're gonna actually find out. We will have standard test conditions and we can actually compare the results to the data sheet. Before we test these batteries, let's talk a little bit about them. They vary in price quite a lot. The Ruxu is $619 and you get 100 amp hours at 12 volts. The Battleborn is $950, you get 100 amp hours at 12 volts. Sinopoly, this is a 40 amp hour battery cell set, but if you buy the 100 amp hour cell set, it's $599. That does not include the BMS, so it's around the same cost as like a Ruxu. The Safari, you get only 90 amp hours at 12 volts. You have prismatic aluminum case cells inside. And for the price, it's about the same as a Battleborn because for 90 amp hours, it's $800. So it's pretty pricey, but it's a pretty cool battery. It has some interesting features that the other ones don't have. And we'll get to that in a second. Here is the Valance battery for medical equipment. This is used. I bought these off of eBay. If you didn't watch that video, they're super cheap. So for 80 amp hours, it cost me $300. Ever since I made my video, they're like double the cost. And now these are actually cheaper than these used ones, which is very sad and unfortunate, but that's what happens when you know there's an opportunity in the market, people start buying them up and the price increases. Over here we have, <laughs> this is a 100 amp hour, 12 volt prismatic cell battery with Sinopoly. These are mismatched cells. They also have been cycled lots and lots of times. These look pretty nasty. Not long ago, you could actually buy these pretty easily, but once I made a video on those, these are out of stock everywhere. But for 100 amp hours at 12 volts, this costs like 250 bucks. So this is technically cheaper than all the batteries, but you have to add your own BMS. And in the back, we have aluminum cased lithium iron phosphate prismatic cells. These are really cool because they're lightweight. And these are 75 amp hours, but these are brand new. So they cost $599 if you buy them. So these cost the same as Sino Polys when they're new, like these ones that are matched. So if you have a application that these work well in, like a bicycle or something, then use them. But for solar, you know, you wanna to stick to these other ones. But it will be cool to test it just to see what the results are. And this video is gonna take multiple days. This is gonna be very hard. Each battery will take five hours to test. This is not an easy endeavor. But once we have the test results, it will be awesome. So yeah, let's get started. So first on the test, we have the Hall Effect sensor practically at the terminal of a Battleborn, and we're going to do 0.2C. So for 100 amp hour battery, that means we need to jack this up to 20 amps and then see how long it can run for. 22 amps, that is good enough. There we go, 20, 22, yeah, that's perfect. We got 1,223 watt hours. That's awesome. That is the exact same result that they have on their website and on the data sheet. Now it's time to test the next battery. I'm just happy that we got the same results as the data sheet. I mean, that's perfect. Now we're gonna test the Ruxu. This is $600 battery, brand new with 1200 watt hours. And we're doing the same discharge rate as the Battleborn. So this will be really interesting. So we'll come back in five hours and see what the results are. 1,241 watt hours. So this did the full rated capacity. And considering this thing is 600 bucks, that's amazing.
Now it's all hooked up, so let's add a load. Right now we're pulling around 20 amps, so this is a 0.2 C rate test for their original 100 amp hour advertised capacity. We've got 2.6 volts. So I put a charger on it just so I can read the stats and we got 1,098 watt hours. So now on to the next battery. And now we're gonna test some used Sinopoly 100 amp hour cells. This will be so cool. But I need to add a BMS and actually build this thing real quick. For this battery, we're gonna use a 100 amp Dali BMS. And this is the same size amp capacity as the other ones that we're testing. So I think that will be fair. And this is the same rate as the previous batteries because this is a 100 amp hour. So everything's the same. Nine hundred and seventy watt hours. That's so funny. Oh my god. This poor battery has been through so much. I don't have no idea what that is. So 968 divided by 1200, we get 80%. So it did 80% capacity, which is the standard for most used cell batteries. So it's good, it's not great. It's cool though, it's neat that it actually did it. By the way, this is the new BMS, it's 100 amps. Isn't that great? So yeah, it's on my website, check it out if you want. <laughs> This one is adorable. So this thing always produces the rated capacity because it's new. These are brand new cells and they're matched by capacity and internal resistance. And because this battery is smaller, we're gonna use a 60 amp BMS. So the wire losses will be similar to the last test. It doesn't matter much though because the sensor is here and it's on the positive. So it doesn't matter actually. And because this battery is so small and we still need to test with the same conditions that we tested the last batteries in, we're going to have to draw 8 amps. So I'm going to add random appliances until I hit exactly 8 amps at 12 volts. So we're at 7 amps, which is super close, but let's try to make it to 8. 8.6, that's really good. These batteries can handle a lot, so yeah, this is a good test. It just passed 100% rated capacity and it still has a lot more to go. So this is really awesome. How are these batteries this good? That's insane. Come on, like I'm getting bored waiting for this battery to die. It just keeps going. So if we were testing at a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts, it would give us 512 watt hours. And that's what lithium iron phosphate is made to do. So this is the first battery that can actually deliver at the nominal voltage of lithium iron phosphate, which is very impressive. Finally, jeez. That is absolutely incredible. That is so good. And at a nominal voltage of 12 volts, we did 111% of its rated capacity. So the Sinopolis are the champions so far, but we have some more batteries to test. So we need to disassemble this whole system and build a new one. By the way, I have these battery kits available on my website for any size system. So check them out. They match them by capacity and internal resistance, and they are awesome. So now we're going to test this blue one. So this is an aluminum case lithium iron phosphate. And if you want to learn more about the pros and cons of these ones in particular, check out my other video. But we're going to just do a capacity test and see how well they perform. And what amazes me is it only takes like five minutes to build a battery. Like once you have all these connectors on here, it takes minutes to add a BMS. So if you want to do do it yourself, it's not hard. And for this battery, we need to draw 15 amps from it continuously if we want the 0.2 C discharge rate for the test. So we're going to run this for five hours and come back to it. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, look at that. We were supposed to hit 900 watt hours for 12 volt nominal and it did 914. So it's not as good as the Sino Poly, but it did 100% of the rated capacity. What I love about these is look how small it is. Actually, they're pretty warm. They dissipate heat very nicely though because they have the aluminum case. Some people were talking about putting some uh, heat sink material between each cell, but for my capacity test, I want these to be warm so they give me good numbers. But yeah, if I was doing this for like a 10 year battery system, then yeah, I'm gonna focus on thermal regulation. I've been doing these tests for like three days now and I feel like it's just my life. It's the best way to learn though. When you actually do this every single day, you really start to understand it. 
I think these did better than all the other drop-in lead acid replacements. So pretty good option, you guys. I mean, this is a cheap BMS. This is 30 bucks. And these cost the same as like a Ruxu, so not bad. Now the final test is my used Valance battery. When I previously tested it, it did 90% capacity, so I wonder at a lower C rate if we might get like 95%. That would be crazy for a used battery. These are really high quality, you guys. They're very expensive when they're brand new, but if you can get them used, which is pretty much impossible after my previous video, they're great little batteries. And so with the fan and the heat gun, we've got 7.8 amps. No way. Did you guys see what number it died at? <laughs> so we did 473 watt hours at 12 volts. I was expecting full capacity of 480. This is a used battery. And in my previous test, we did not do as well because it was at a higher C rate. Yeah, Valance batteries, you guys, these are really good, top notch. I wish they weren't so expensive brand new. These are really a lot of money. So this video took three days to film. I am so tired. Anyways, let's talk about these batteries. These test results were really good. And because our capacity readings match the data sheet, I would say that this Hall Effect sensor is accurate. If I was getting different numbers on multiple tests, and I've been doing all of these tests for multiple months now, I think I would have noticed it by now. So let's talk about the results. Most of the capacity ratings are pretty typical. There was nothing that was that amazing. The new Sino Poly cells, they produce a lot of capacity when they're brand new. But if you cycle them a couple hundred times, you're probably going to get the same capacity readings is like a battleborn because I cycled this a couple hundred times. I'm over here doing 80% capacity for a $250 battery. That's pretty incredible. This one probably has thousands of cycles on it. I mean, these are extremely used and cheap and mismatched off of eBay. On the next ones over here, these are still really good. I just hate the terminals and it's hard to mount them. But like I said in a previous video, for some applications, if you need a lightweight lithium iron phosphate, these are good. The Valance for the price is probably the winner of this test. $150 and we got 40 amp hours at 12 volts. I mean, that's better or the same as all of these that are brand new. And I bought this for super cheap. I wish there were more available. I know I made that video and they are completely out of stock for months now, but these are awesome batteries. And if you can buy them new, that might be a good option too, but these are expensive. Also, that was only at 12 volts nominal when we tested. If you look at the battery, it says watt hours 512 because that's at 12.8 um, volts nominal because that's for this chemistry. This is a slight modification to the original lithium iron phosphate they add magnesium and i don't know a whole lot about it but yeah these things are freaking awesome man and for a brand new raw cell system you can't go wrong with Sinopoly. just the c rate for charge and discharge um there's lots of data sheets on these these are awesome cells and the ruksu produce more than the battleborn but the ruksu is brand new and i only cycled it like five times i only did like a couple tests with it with the battleborn i cycled it for a few months so about like 100 cycles so I understand that it should be producing more but it's practically the same as a battleborn they're probably using similar cylindrical cells Ruxu buys good cells they sell these Sino poly cells and they know what they're doing they match them at the factory so I know battleborn is the good one and they have low temp cutoff and Ruxu doesn't so you have to buy a solar charge controller with low temperature cutoff but the Battleborn and the Rooksu are both really good options, depending on what your budget's like. And then the Safari in the back, I feel kind of bad for it. Look it, it's just hiding back here. This thing's actually a really good battery. I just feel so bummed that they had to, you know, fudge up the numbers on the capacity because that's not cool. It does not deliver 1200 watt hours. They changed all the labels on thousands of batteries at the factory and on the boxes and on the manuals and on the website and on their distributors websites. They told me and now it says 1100 watt hours. So now their advertising is accurate and they do have a good battery. I mean, this BMS is awesome. It has a 
a coulomb meter. Like you can check the state of charge with the press of a button. Like I really like this thing and it's a bummer that they advertise falsely in the beginning. You should never ever round up your capacity numbers. All of these guys round down. Every single battery on the market that comes from a high quality manufacturer always under exaggerates the capacity. They told me that some of their best batteries got um, 1,177 watt hours. And so they just bumped it up. They just rounded up to 1200 and you should never ever do that. You will lose the trust of your viewers. It's not a good surprise to have. And a lot of people that test these have been saying that they got the same results as my first test, which was one kilowatt hour or 1000 watt hours. Now, is it a higher C rate? Yes. And this C rate is better for like a solar power system. But yeah, still, you want to rate these things properly. So I still like the Lion Safari and it's very lightweight considering it has 90 amp hour prismatic aluminum case cells. And it's still a good option, but because of the reduced capacity, um, it's pretty much the same price as the Battleborn. And the Ruxu blows all the other drop in lead acid replacements away because of the price. I mean, literally, if you get a Ruxu and you get a Victron low temperature connect with battery sense, you are done and you are saving so much money. You're saving like $350 off of each battery. If you buy four batteries, that's a lot of money. That's crazy. So the batteries did well, but I was already expecting them to give me those numbers. What I like is that the Hall Effect sensor at standard test conditions gave me consistent results that match the data sheet. And a lot of people were like, oh, that's a cheap Chinese, whatever. But it's a Hall Effect sensor. It is such a simple device, you guys. It's not hard to build these. And so, yeah, you can buy a Fluke or you can buy a shunt that's made for testing. You could buy that $1,200 battery capacity tester, but I don't want to. I mean, this might be off by like one one thousandth of a watt hour but i don't care for these tests i just want to see if there's false advertising and how they work under high loads that's all i care about and some of my viewers are like oh it's a cheap chinese product it's not gonna work that well and i agree i do not like china's culture i do not like their government there is so much more we can say politically about china but they do really well at making batteries and solar panel cells. They destroy the competition. America is behind and that's not that bad. I don't want my grandma working in a battery factory. I kind of like having those factories over there. I mean, you guys can debate that all day long, but they're doing a good job like lithium titanate. They're the only ones that make that. So if anybody complains about China and solar products, tell them to open up a lithium titanate battery here in the United States. I would love for somebody to do that please prove them wrong and build a better battery. Also, I read an article recently that China sells more electric vehicles than the rest of the world's countries combined. They are doing something different over there with renewables and when it comes to solar. And even though I do these solar videos, I'm all about nuclear and like geothermal and hydroelectric. I like all of them. I don't care. I'm not just gung ho crazy about solar and thinking, oh, China, they're leading the world. I don't care at all. I think we need everybody to work together. We're in a global economy. So yeah, I hate when people bash on China when they're the ones producing the best performing stuff. But the Americans have been building the crappy stuff lately. Think about all of my videos and look at the badly manufactured ones. They're usually assembled in United States of America. So yeah, I'm not trying to turn this into a rant, but China has good and bad things. I don't agree or disagree with the politics of it. But yeah, when it comes to solar stuff, they're doing it and I'm going to buy it from them. And all of these, even these American ones, all of these cells come from China. So yeah, if you want to build your own factory, please build your own factory and prove me wrong. Build a better battery. You know, don't complain about China. Build something better. That's what we need more of. I'm just so tired of people complaining and not actually fixing the problem. So yeah, you guys get the idea. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much for watching my video and see ya. Bye.